The idea that matter is fundamentally music can be traced back to 1864 when a British chemist named John Newlands proposed that every eighth element on the periodic table would repeat the behavior of the previous eight. This law of octaves became what we now call the law of periodicity. And though it only worked up to calcium and the transition elements would have to be skipped and he was laughed out of the Royal College by other scientists, his idea did plant a seed that would grow. At the heart of all music is ting and tall, or tension and release, on beat and off beat. This duality is also seen in elements. Probably the best example is the Dirac wave equation, where we realized that for every particle, there's an antiparticle. Another is that electrons exist in pairs with opposite qualities. So, in atomic physics, there are many places where dualities exist. Music is made with vibrations, and these vibrations can be divided into harmonics that ascend in divisions of twos and threes, and their various multiples. So when you pluck a string, you will either get two antinodes or three antinodes at the most basic of divisions. The nodes are the zero points where the wave vibrates around it, and the antinodes are the vibrating or oscillating parts of the wave. And all atoms are made of three fundamental particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. And if we further divide these into their smallest components, there are still three fundamental particles, the electron, neutrino, and quark. Also, there are three valence quarks, where a difference in one of them means the singular difference in every neutron and proton. But let's admit, all this could just be a coincidence. Not long after the Bohr model of the atom came the Heisenberg-Schrodinger model. This model of the atom was now based on odds, or the likelihood of finding an electron in a given spot. The math that would explain their experiments would use equations for spherical harmonics. These are the sorts of things that you get when you solve for the wave equation on the surface of a sphere, for instance. These spherical harmonics are essentially vibrations of a spherical membrane. So according to the Schrodinger equation, electrons aren't particles, but oscillations in a spherical membrane. Obviously, an electron, when located or isolated, is a particle. But in this new model, perhaps they aren't particles, Instead, they are waves until an experiment condenses the wave into a particle. The experimental evidence and the math are correlated so closely that this new quantum theory of matter is commonly referred to as the most precise scientific discipline ever devised by humankind. It can predict atomic properties with extreme accuracy up to 10 decimal places. Let's compare what happens in these electron orbitals to vibrations caused by a bow across a metal plate. Isn't it uncanny how these musical vibrations resemble their 3D counterparts in atomic orbitals? In harmonic scales, the energies or frequencies get closer and closer with higher harmonics. This same musical property is shared in atomic energy levels. Notice how the orbital energy levels first of neon compared to sulfur and then iron rises in complexity. These are liquid water droplets suspended in sound waves. If we vibrate them at different frequencies, notice how the shape becomes more and more complex as the frequency rises. And I rest my case. Everything is music. Music <laughs>